Coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. What's up, rock and rollers? Yep, it's that time. It's time for another exciting episode of the Rich Redman Show. Where we talk about all things music, motivation, and success. Hey, these are the things that drive us. I usually have my co-host here, Jim McCarthy, Jim McCarthy Voiceovers.com, and check out his new podcast, Mostly Middle Tennessee Business Podcast. Jim is a great guy. Longtime friend, drum hobbyist, and um, he takes the pressure off because he doesn't have to pay his bills playing the drums. He just has fun with it. Hey, this took some rescheduling because this guy is busy. He's everywhere. He's over and, you know, across the pond. He's on the West Coast because he's such a fantastic drummer. Long overdue since 2010. Our friend here has been the touring drummer with Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inducted Cheap Trick. Also the recording drummer. The wiki will leave that off sometimes, but he's on the last four records and it's some amazing stuff. Of course, I'm talking about my friend Dax Nielsen. What's up, bud? What an intro, Rich. Thanks for ah, having me. It's very you know, Hollywood. You know, I wish you're I had one of those professionals. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. So if you guys aren't watching this on the YouTube and you're just consuming it with your ear holes, um, Dax is in his home studio and he's got a beautiful drum set and he, and he just did me, he did the, but it might not be the last time he does it. it <laughs> Right behind me, I, I can spin around and get you all the the rim shots you need. It's gonna come in handy. So, so catch us up really quick um, with your recent schedule. Where you, where'd you just come uh, come home from? Uh, we just we started the year. We kind of started a little later than normal. I mean, Cheap Trick, we play always over a hundred shows a year, no matter what. So we didn't start this year until like uh, January twentieth, which was unheard of. But you know, <laughs> we did like uh, Atlantic City, New Orleans. Uh, down in Florida by Miami, Fort Lauderdale area. And uh, we're getting ready to go to Australia for five weeks. Oh, now that's the way to do it. I have done Australia in a four day window and that's some extreme jet lag. Well, there's not that many places to play there, honestly. Um, but they're right this, so it's our winter, but over there it's summer. Yeah. So we're going over and we're doing this, I think it's called Red Hot, Red Hot Summer Festival, something like that. We're doing, yeah. you know, we're doing in in five weeks we're doing like 30 shows over there which i mean i've been to australia this would be my sixth time and i've never done more than like 10 or 12 because you know yeah. you play perth most people don't even never get to perth because it's so far away but yeah the sydney it yeah, seems like sydney is like a, a, a brilliant combination of new york and la because you got the palm trees and there's it's so cultural but you can't see it in 18 hours and that's what i had to work with not to mention you're completely reversed your body has no idea what's going on and they're like get up there and play the drums and you're like all right yeah, we just go keep time and look cool and, you know, <laughs> you know you're like you know how jet lag is like yeah. if you're standing on the ground you feel like the, you can feel the earth moving on you're like oh my god but i'm very fortunate that we have uh two days to acclimate before our first show we land have the night off and some of my some of our good friends uh the goo goo dolls and matchbox 20 have that night off and then they play the next night so i'm gonna land hang out with uh you know craig mcintyre Mac. yeah and uh neil daniels is doing the tour oh yeah Mac. that's right neils is doing it because for yeah. it was for a while it was ryan mcmillan was doing it yeah right? yeah, yeah. yeah and um uh stacy jones nice we'll have to get uh yeah neil, neil is he's he's persistent man he he's like i want to be on the show I was like we're gonna do it man it <laughs> is happening it's just a matter of making it happen i'm old and i, I rescheduled like three times <laughs> no i love it dude and i and you were talking about looking cool man you've always got the drip man you always got layers of necklaces i'm gonna steal your scarf game how many scarves you got you got a different one every day man i love it how many do you want I'll, I'll dude, send I, to I, you. that's what i'm saying i am gonna i'm gonna like Try to up my game a little bit there but i've also got my victor and drizzo just white t-shirt on so just the plain I, white the plain half, white tee half don't give a shit and half tried my hardest no i like <laughs> i like how you can dress up a white tee and i'm just look at me i look like you know it's always black it's you always, you always look great buddy oh thanks buddy um so you know what band i looked up you know you have a you have a history playing with dick dale you have a, a history playing with brandy carlisle going back you guys need some more spotify followers harman right Harmony Riley. Yeah. That was yeah. a band from a, like a good 20 years. It's kick ass band, man. Thanks. Yeah. That was me and my brother, Miles. And, you know, I started when I was a junior in high school and went until 2004. So it was a good seven year run. And yeah, you know, we gave it our college try. We, here's making it. And we came to like, right. 
there and then you just kind of figured oh, okay so then yeah, yeah. yeah after when when you know that kind of fizzled and you know it's hard when you play hundreds of gigs a year for 150 bucks a night yeah sleeping on friends couches and all that and just trying to do what you love it's 150 bucks so, for the whole band <laughs> yeah <laughs> and our bass player was like six seven so like he just took up all the space on the he couches just, and everything. he just took up all the space well yeah, well you know that runs its course and I, so i moved to la and became a, a, a hired drummer so so when so you're in phoenix now right yes i moved here two years ago do you love it do you, it's so hot in the summer but i mean i'm gone all summer heat. i tell it yeah <laughs> i'm gone all summer in the last two years i've been here so i've never experienced it it works great you know i love it it's a big city i mean even with no traffic it's about an hour to get across totally yeah yeah but yeah i mean just last two nights ago you know for example portugal the man played here in town and i'm friends with those guys so i went to the yeah. show and, you know like i go when i'm around i go to four to five shows a week because i'm friends with so many people and they're like hey we're coming through i'm like cool i'm gonna put the kids to bed and i'll be there at 7 45 you know and yeah how many kids do you have you're a family man two little boys it's uh, six and seven years old oh right that that is like kind of right around when i started getting is interested in rhythm and was beating everything in sight are they gonna do they totally. have the bug yeah oh they got the bug they got you can't maybe see them back there i got them two stratocasters for christmas ah. last year and then this year i got them a, a roland keyboard nice mostly for me because I, I love to play piano but like hey this is for you boys that is but, such a you know, that's kind of how i started i there was instruments around my house my entire life and on your way to the bathroom you just go strum a guitar for 30 seconds and go, oh that's cool and then yeah. eventually you start wanting to learn and learn a chord or six time in the trenches I, I, I remember having it i remember having a guitar but i think i beat it like a drum so it was just like my 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 calling was yeah laid yeah, out ahead of me it's cool so I, I you know i'm one of four kids and only two of us are musicians it was never forced on us it was like if you want to play here's some drums and yeah there's a piano in the house and here's a, a million guitars so that's kind of what i'm hoping for my kids yeah you're you, you stock the pond for them in the environment and if they're drawn to it they're drawn to it right so i mean got a piano lessons going but i also my older son's and in, in, he's seven and he's starting golf lessons like if he wants to be an athlete yeah hopefully he doesn't have my physique <laughs> no, no 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 seriously no you get like you're like college for free play sports kid play yeah, sports. just go do learn anything that isn't just a job like you can become a you can make money playing golf or playing drums or yeah you, know, you don't now, have to do a nine to five you can go to a, a ten to two yeah <laughs> In Nashville, you can do a 10 and a 2. A 10 o'clock session and a 2 o'clock session on two different drum sets. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. Have you spent some time in Nashville? Do you like it? You, I'm sure you guys did the rhyming. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've recorded a lot there, but I also I live there. When I left L.A., I was in L.A. about six, seven years. I moved to Nashville, lived in Sylvan Park, uh, 2009 and 10. Wow. It was um, the ghetto. It was the ghetto in Sylvan Park back then. Like you're right um I, you know what so funny when you were living in sylvan park we weren't we weren't on each other's radar there was that that little watering hole there that everybody got their bagels in the morning star bagel on the corner right there never, i never heard of that sorry oh, oh, yeah, oh yeah, wait up the hill yeah I, yep i did i think i went there with jerry Rowe one time yeah and then right across the street is kind of like this community center and then a golf course and then up caddy corner is this little um set of older condominiums from like the 70s or 80s and that was my first home purchase like 700 square feet oh, mine was <laughs> even less <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> incredible so so sure you're right you're yeah. obviously rock and roll royalty buddy i mean you i'm sure you get this all the time um what was uh you know how did it start because the drums are your second instrument right third yeah. third instrument all yeah, right my parents my parents put me into piano from yep. kindergarten all the way through the day i graduated high school so yeah 12 years of piano lessons and that's I, I really do feel like that's the if you can learn piano you learn left and right hands you learn theory you learn dexterity you learn chords and phrasing and all that stuff so oh yeah through that i just taught myself guitar um kind of i started out like Jeff Healy, that remember the the blind guitar player that was in Roadhouse. Totally. I laid my I laid my guitar on my on my lap and played like a piano. Yeah. And eventually did it right, but and then drums, you know, 
was natural to me. And, and my dad's a guitar player and my brother is a guitar player. So I didn't necessarily want to be the third guitar player in the family. Yeah. You know, um, and I was a shy kid. So yeah. I, didn't, I liked to hide behind these things and didn't have to be up front, you know. Yeah. Tight. So I could be in the now, back. if I could, if I could sing, I tell you what, man, I have a front man personality. I would be up there. I would, great, you would yeah. never find me behind the drums. I would be up front. <laughs> so you're saying you're not a <laughs> Phil Collins. Right. <laughs> I would be up there rocking. Give me the tambourine, man, like Paul yeah. Rogers. I mean, um, the older I've gotten, the more I've gotten way more comfortable on stage, obviously, and yeah. less, less afraid of people. But so I would, yeah, same thing. Now I could probably play guitar in a band or. Yeah. And you should. Uh, is there is there a solo record on the way? I'm always working on stuff. I write quite a bit. Yeah. yeah and I've, yeah. You know, I've learned how to, to run the, the DAW, the digital audio workspace. So, yes. yeah, I'm, I'm always just, I do, you know, guerrilla style I, I, I write something and just put my own drums and bass and guitar and piano on it and scratch vocals I, I, I sing backgrounds pretty good but yeah i don't have a voice for um for lead singing yeah <laughs> not many people do it's, i mean that's got it's one of the most grueling things to do on stage night after night and yeah. also it's just a, it's a, just a gift if you and it's always it. hard to find a an amazing front man who has the pipes who has the charisma who has the consistency who doesn't have lead singer disease who's a team player. That is a very difficult thing to find. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> it really, I've met it, a lot of singers in my life and yeah, sometimes yeah. It, it takes a special person though. I will say that like to want to be the guy up front versus the guy in the back or the guy, you know, to want to be this, the, the CEO, if you will, instead of, you know, the grunt worker in the back, just laying the foundation. So. Yeah, totally. Now, now you, um, had some, uh, shoes to fill, was did when you were uh, when that call came? How did that happen? You filled in one time, right? When Bunny had like a surgery or something, and I, yeah, I filled in one summer, ah, you know, yeah. in two thousand one. I turned twenty one on that tour, and Harmony Riley, the band that you previously previously mentioned, yeah, we were the opening act all summer, and uh, yeah, Bunny Carlos had had some some back issues, and one night, <clears throat> excuse me, he came to me and just said. Can you do the encore tonight? I was like, I sure I'm too dumb and young to, you know, and I, and I grew up around the music. So yeah, yeah, why not? You know, so I did the encore and then I did the, like the next three or four nights. And then one day he said, I'm flying home tomorrow to have back surgery. So you're doing the rest of the tour. <laughs> so I was doing the opening act for 45 minutes to an hour and then 30 minute changeover and then did, you know, 90 plus with you trick. So. That was a that was a whole summer of that, and then yeah. So ten years later, or geez, nine years. No, the hell what was my math. Yeah, nine years later, something like that. I got yeah. the phone call. Amazing, um, two thousand ten, right? Yeah. So something, you know, obviously something happened in the band, and they said we need a drummer uh, in two days. And I was like, well, I'm going. I'm flying to Germany in three days with this artist I was playing with, and they're like, okay, call us back. We need an answer right away. I'm like, whoa. What's the answer there? You're like, you yeah, know, am I, loyalty, am to the, loyalty to, the, to the person that was that was hiring me at the time. Yeah, and so I called a good friend of mine in Nashville, actually, Brad Pemberton, uh, great drummer. He right. played for Ryan Adams and the Cardinals for a long time. And yes, anyways, he said, "Dude, one gig with Cheap Trick is worth gold. Like, cancel your gig, find a sub." And I was like, "Okay." And here we are 14 years later. That's amazing. And it's a, yeah. it's, it's a steady job. It's family. It's this song, this, uh, legacy songbook. What's the yeah. favorite song to play? What's the favorite song every night? Um, is it, is it the drum solo? Cause I've been seeing, I saw a lot of, the, <laughs> I, just, I hate doing drum solos. I mean, I've, I've got so great some though. chops, but yeah. you know, once again, I, I like to be, I prefer to be the Phil Rudd or the Ringo of the band versus sure. the Neil Peart or, you know, whatever. They're both great, but my personality lends more just to keeping a solid foundation. No, but you do that amazing, and it's such a yeah. slinky, greasy style, and and you know honoring that songbook, but also you know having some of your personality in there. And then that said, drum set, it's uh, drum solo. It's over a uh, usually over some sort of eighth note vamp. The ones that I've seen, are like that's so fun because there's something to like yeah. latch onto, and you can play all your Ringoy, Philly, Krupa type <laughs> things. Man, it's great. Yeah, yeah I mean. I think you, you've done drum solos and I, I've done a few, the typical place of comfort, I would say for most drummers is to keep four on the floor with the bass, with the bass drum. Yeah. You know, great drummers can ad lib and go all over the place and do jazz and, and all that. But like for a rock audience, it's kind of 
you want to keep them dancing. You want to keep them moving. You want to keep them their head bobbing. And so, you know, I don't prefer to do drum solos, but but when I do, I try to keep four on the floor and just keep you know keep because this it goes from the song. It doesn't stop, and then I do a drum solo. Like, yeah, I do it just in two different songs for cheap trick, and you want to keep the the, car, the crowd into it. You know, not go get a drink or go use the bathroom. Oh, it, that that's the solo. challenge, right? Keeping them there. You know, yeah. So you want to keep it interesting. Don't go too long, but don't you know? Just try to keep building momentum and. and crests and valleys and whatnot and i've got like seven ideas usually <laughs> just trying no, to no it's great and you make and your way over to the cowbell and then you end yeah. with like a flurry of 16ths and it's very melodic and there's like call and response you know what i mean that stuff is never gets old it's you know it's when i do it it's definitely um stream of conscious but it's also yeah. stuff i've thought about like what if i have to do a drum so what ideas do i want to incorporate so you don't want to, I don't have anything written, but at the same time, I've got a few ideas and I know people love cowbell. It's just, you know, it's become the, thank you. Will Ferrell. Thing. So like, I always just do a little thing in the cowbell and the crowd yeah. goes crazy. It's like, thanks, Charlie Watts. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Will Ferrell. Blue, yeah. The blue oyster cult. Oh, but, that, that that's great. Uh, you know, I got to play that, uh, that song with blue oyster cult at the wolf den at Mohegan sun. I did too. And it was, I, I posted on Instagram. It's about eight years ago. It was like the best moment of my life. I'm just sitting <laughs> back there in the cowbell, like laughing. I mean, just so much fun on stage. Yeah. Oh my God. That's amazing, man. It was such you know, a, that Jules, was, Jules, oh, yeah. He's a great drummer. Yeah. Great drummer. So many drummers. So many, all great. We are a brotherhood. And so unique. Yeah. I got to see you. I had the pleasure of seeing you. It's we're going back now. 2016 ascend amphitheater me and sutter came out and saw you yeah. i think you guys were who was the other bill oh frampton frampton with, Wo frampton. with wojo how great is frampton he's pl back playing like he, he did his final tour because he like was losing uh feeling in his hands and then yeah. had some surgery or some kind of therapy and he's back now yeah that's great it is it and is so great Sutter's great and you're great <laughs> everybody's great oh great i'm having a great day yeah man no that was really really great to see you and i you know my preferred place to watch an act is of course by the monitor board side stage you know yeah, that's where i grew up too and i, I mean I, I hate when i have to go out and watch from the audience because it just sounds different you and i were used to hearing the back of the amps yes. and the monitors and all that stuff and then you, yeah. you're, you're just getting the one dimensional front of house mix and you're like ah oh, this sucks <laughs> what is the favorite <laughs> thing play uh, favorite song to play? Is that what you said? Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a bunch. I love the song Top of the World, which is off Cheap Trick's third album. Big Eyes is off yeah. their second album. Yeah. But then you go to, the, you know, obviously, if you, the second you start the drum intro to I Want You to Want Me, the crowd, you know, even if there's everybody sitting down the whole show, they immediately stand up and to see, you know, just to see the crowd light up and go, oh, this, there's my jam, or, you know, play Surrender. Gonna Raise Hell is the one that I do a drum solo in. Yeah. Uh, Ain't that a shame? Start, I, it starts with the drums. And they're all, I mean, like you said, there's such a catalog. And, um, oh, yeah. You could sample that, put that on your SPD and, and put it right in your drum solo right there. Barking yeah. Notes. So, I mean, is, is ready? Hey, I'm looking for some really amazing uh, just nuggets here that people might not know. I found this information that you scored. Did you play the drums and or score the Oscar winning documentary Undefeated? Yeah, yeah. Uh, with my brother Miles and our friend Dan McMahon. Uh, my best friend since I was 12, he was the lead singer in my first two bands, Dan Lindsay, became a documentary filmmaker at some point. Wow. And he was making a documentary down in Memphis about this uh, inner city, you know, really run down high school football team that had never won anything in like 96 years. And uh, this really great coach came in and turned it all around. And they just happened to be there filming kind of about something else. But then it turned out to be this whole other story, uh, which became so riveting and just incredible. So anyways, they won the Oscar for that. Um, it's big, man. Congrats. Yeah. So they, I did the, you know, I did the drumming and kind of helped start the, the writing of the material with my brother and our friend Dan. And yeah, I, so I didn't get a Grammy or I'm sorry, an Oscar. Ah, the director gets that, but you know the, the music doesn't get it unless it's I think maybe the, the music category. But yeah, but I, yeah, oh. I did the drumming on that. So that that is great. And then also on your site, great site. Um, you have a you have a uh, 
a, a SoundCloud link, and there's a song called Krupa Trupa. Trupa Trupa. Oh, and it's a, right. it's a it's a big and there's also some like great song like Americana roots, power pop stuff. And your drumming is just always just right in the pocket. Very musical. Great sounds. Huge sounds. I'm jealous, man. Big. Oh, yeah, that Krupa Trupa. A friend of mine oh, was like a, a musical director for commercials or like video games kind of thing, you know. And he just said, can you just do like a, a Gene Krupa type type drum solo and so I found some vintage old drums that had old heads on them and yeah. beat up old cymbals and just kind of just went crazy for like a minute and a half or two minutes. And I think it sounds okay. Yeah. It's amazing, dude. Yeah. <laughs> That's the first thing I pulled up. Re really, really great. Um, and then, you know, so for all the gearheads, I know you have this uh, relationship with the, of course, Ludwig drums. Um, yeah. What is the, uh, what's the gear that you'll find at a cheap trick show? Uh, with Cheap Trick, I, I play a four-piece Ringo style, um, mm -hmm. one up, one down. Typically a six and a half by fourteen mm -hmm. snare. I do, but I do love a five. I just think fives just had that crack to them, you know. I know, me too. Are you a super guy, super phonic guy, or a Black Beauty guy? Both. I'm actually. Yeah, I know, but some usually one on, might you win. Go on YouTube, I'm. I'm yeah. this. I endorse. I did a video for Ludwig for the Acro or, or the Supra Light. Yeah, which is their like low end. I don't want to say low end, but they're but they're low price point. It's like a mixture between everything, and it's just like the most versatile snare drum that I own. I own like six of them because at the store they they sell for like one hundred and forty bucks. And I wow. swear to God, it's, I swear to God, it's the greatest sounding drums. A super light. I'm gonna go pick one up, dude. Where you are dropping super some light, knowledge yeah. bombs, some like, nice it's like a super phonic and an acro light mixed. The super light. It's I, I swear to God, I got five fives and five six and a halves. You know, just but back here I got a copper phonic. I don't know if you can see. Oh that. yeah, I have not made uh, made the purchase yet, but those are great. Yeah, I mean, Ludwig snares are you know they're known as the snares, the rock and roll brand. recording snare drums, right? Yeah, I don't care what brand anybody plays. It's like yeah, yeah but I play a Ludwig snare, and it looks like really big awesome darker zildjans yes these are all this one's a crash of doom which oh, i don't yeah. live it's kind of like a, a oriental or, or uh, it's like a china if a china swiped right on a uh, crash it's great. try not to hit it too hard for the no, no. i love it's that, it. that it's got like a crash feel to it but also that that sorry Dude, oh, I, I love it. This is like the I'd hit that podcast. It's very yeah, warts, warts and all. Makes it fun. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah, the Crash of Doom. This is what I, I recorded that a lot. It just record. It just picks up so great, and it, it it's not abrasive like a like a China would be. Orient, I don't know what they call it's it. It's just anything. dark enough. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of yeah. like in Sabian. We have the O zones, you know, which right. has got the holes in it. Yeah, and I was lucky. I went to the Zildjian factory one day, and that's a twenty-four inch prototype jazz ride, and it just sounds yeah. so. It's just you dark. could shoulder crash it. You could crash it. There's a yeah. bell. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of what I'm recording with right now. But uh, look back to cheap trick. You said uh, twenty-four usually kick drum, yeah. thirteen or fourteen rack, fifteen or sixteen tom, and floor tom, and then nice. um, Zildjian cymbals, of course. Yeah. Pro Mark sticks, Evans heads, and and so in, in the studio I just a lot of the, the uh, big fat snare drums. Oh yeah, yeah. isn't it a great? I mean, Chris and those guys, what a great invention! It's so hard to get a ancillary music accessory product to be really popular, and they have crushed it. Yes, nailing it, and it's it's what a difference. As you know, you've done a million recordings. Yeah, you no longer have to do the the gaff tape or the moon gels or whatever it would be like. Here's yeah. this cracky snare, and then you put that thing on, and all of a sudden it's Americana snare. <laughs> just one, it takes three seconds. You could be, you could be playing a song and just reach over, and here comes the chorus with the different snare sound, and it's the snake, the same snare. Yeah. So smart, so yeah. smart. Yeah, man. Happy for those guys. Yeah, I love that. And and then so what's on the? Um, uh, you have a real double ply head on the snare drum, or do you go with a thinner head and just change it more often? Um, I don't hit really hard. I kind of, yeah. kind of. Again, my Ringo buckling. I, I swipe the cymbals and the drums instead of hitting down on them. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I like the sound for most things I'm doing with just your typical, you know, single ply. 
But even the fact that you don't consider yourself a hard hitter, man, I would be so afraid to have a single ply, like an ambassador style head on my snare drum at a rock and roll show. That's a, it's a real testament to your uh, touch, man. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, maybe I'm just dumb. I, I, I just, <laughs> or I'm cheap. I just didn't want to ever have to change heads or get new symbols when I was young. So, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, no, the, the touch is fantastic. The tone is fantastic. The gear right in there with the rock and roll lineage. Um, you uh, were told me that you did. I was so upset. I couldn't stay at the PAS, but you did your first drum clinic at yeah. the most hallowed place <laughs> where it's like everyone's expecting. I've done 500 drum solos. I could uh, drum clinics. I could find. And it's like, I love how you just throw yourself into the deep end of the pool. And I heard it was amazing. How did you feel? Did, was it a great time? Yeah, I mean, uh, my buddy Eric Hughes has been trying to get me in there for years now. Yeah, and yeah. I was always like, you know, I'm one. I'm usually pretty busy, so it just never lines up. But two, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a band drummer. That's how I consider myself mostly. Yeah. So it was never one of those things. Like, yeah, I want to get up and just show people how to do what I do. It's like I don't. That just seems, you know, not in my wheelhouse. But um, him and my buddy Mark Powers just kind of both said, "You're doing this." Yes, you're off. I, I know you're off. You're going to come and do it. And it, it was the greatest experience because I was scared to death. You know, obviously, you know, it's not something I've practiced or done a million times. And it's just, it, you know, I'm not like I said, I'm not afraid of people. But at the same yeah. time, it's the hollow ground. Like, you said, like yeah, no, I mean, in the audience is a drummer and they, you know, judging, judging, judging. Ouch. Ouch. But it, all my national buddies were there. You know, mm -hmm. so many of them were there. Um, and they were all super supportive and they showed up and sat and through the whole thing. And Glenn Kochi was there from Wilco and oh, yeah. Matt Chamberlain had just done one and Matt Cameron was there supporting me. And it was just like, okay, yeah. you know? So I kind of did, I played along to a few tracks that I've recorded and then just kind of talked about a few things that I do personally and things that, you know, I've, I've come to have become my thing, if you will. Yes. Just took some questions as well. Cause that was, easier than anything so so you knocked it out of the ballpark it felt great everybody had a great time all you had to do was show up and be yourself which is yeah. which is yeah. really the trick because we're all just snowflakes we're one of a kind you could try to be like somebody else but it ain't gonna happen completely yeah you know? like I said, the positivity from everybody there really helped me you know yes. um i think for the first time it, it went really well now, I, do you I have learned, a desire to do some more that one hour you yeah know, do you want to do some more? Yeah, hell yeah. All right. It was so, I mean, just that, I think I, like you said, I started off with, with the best of the best. <laughs> like, at Pasic, you're not at some drum shop with like five people. You're, I you're love in it. An auditorium with a like, bunch of names and, and friends. And it's like, oh, yeah. Shit. But so, yeah, like, like you said, I just jumped in, with, you know, the deep end. And I think anything from there just has to be a bit easier or a bit. Yeah. Oh no! You ch you jumped into the deep end of the pool. Blood is in the water. Sharks are swimming around you. You did it. You came out. You proved to yourself. No big deal. I can do this anytime. You were telling me that one of the focuses of the clinic was going to be on that that left hand stylistic element that was popularized by Bunny. That yeah, I think to play a cheap a cheap trick song, you almost have to kind of incorporate that technique. Yeah, it's, it's really his sound and, and the band's sound is is the. Constant. You're all, I, mean, I, I probably hit the snare drum 10,000 times in a 90 minute show, you know? Yeah. Most all, you know, three ghost notes and then, and then, and then two, the two and the fours, you know? It's like, yeah. It's kind of their sound. It's kind of a swingy, but it just fills everything out. It, it doesn't work for everything. You know, I've done a lot of sessions and then played with other bands and I tried to do it. It was like, okay, yeah. that sounds weird. What are you doing? And I'm like, yeah. oh, that's the sound for the band I play for. But, you know, so sometimes twos and fours is all you need. Sometimes it's all you need. Yeah, you're definitely playing more notes than me because I'm just hitting a two and four, and then maybe the little, little some little squidly gigglies and cut yes. yes. got, got some James Brown stuff in there right. that is like so close to the head. So, um, you, you said that you recorded the last four cheap trick records. What is that process like of going into the studio and tracking? Do you guys like work it out on a sound stage and just go in and execute, or do you use the studio as a place to compose and rehearse? Uh, definitely not rent a sound stage, but you know, sound checks because we play so much. Ah, yeah. okay. Hey, yeah. But a lot, you know, these days, email is great or Dropbox. And hey, I, these, I got the, a chorus idea. Anybody have an idea for the verse or whatever? Oh, I got this part and kind of piecemeal things together and then get together 
versus, you know, either at Soundcheck or just in the studio for a day or two, or even like just, you know, you're a you know, Nashville session guy, like and the 20 minutes before you record it, just like, let's run, run it twice and yeah, go. And I think and it's got to be fun. It's got to be fun to be able to really, if you want to take your time and deconstruct things. And yeah, I mean, you know, cheap tricks, you rock and roll, you know, at, at its, at its most basic form, you know, for yeah. the most part. So it, it, we're not like working out like, you know, seven over 15 parts or, you know, anything like that. It's, no, let's kick it off. Let's tell a story and have it yeah, be slinky. All about the and lyrics just, and then just the, yeah. the band rocking. And we try to do pretty much everything we can live. So it's like a live feel, mm -hmm. which I think is, is great. You know, I, I know a lot of Nashville stuff. They still try to get it on the floor. Yeah. You know, don't overdub stuff later. Yeah. But you can nail it now. So a lot of the stuff on our last four albums, I mean, are first or second takes and maybe replace or put a guitar solo on because you obviously don't want to do that at the time or just punch a few things here and there. But most of that stuff is just us playing how we play. Yeah. You know? Yeah, there's no reason to do anything else but capture that man, which is so exciting. You get that you get that feel when you're listening to it. You can tell it's not the drummer and the bass player went in and to a click track, and I mean we do stuff to a click, obviously, but yeah, it's not just like okay, let's get the drums and bass, and then we'll put guitars over that and then yeah. vocals later. Another Robin, the singer's in the in the vocal booth, you know, isolated, so you can't hear anything else. And yeah, it's just and that's it's been a great way to work spontaneously even though it's prepared and whatnot but yeah so obviously click tracks are very helpful in, in recording in the studio but when it comes to uh playing live you guys kick it kick it off right boom you make, yeah. do you use a reference like a little light or something i do yeah my my, my old tech and i we came up with this idea i have a, a a metronome and he went to ace hardware and bought an led like gooseneck light and spliced it and put like the headphone jack on it and we, I mean, I've played over 200 different songs with Cheap Trick. Like we change our set list every single night. I didn't so know I that. That's, that's I cool. I've got of laminated tempos. Wow. And I just wanted to know that I start the song off around the right tempo. You know, you could be excited, you could be tired, but you know, that might affect the way you start at something, but, or whatever you're, you're just having fun and like, oh man, that song took off, you know, that yeah. kind of feeling. Look at the Which light and uh, look at the light and sing the chorus. And then yeah. usually that's going to get you like pretty dang close. Yeah. So I'm just on earplugs and wedges and then just a visual light just to, so I know I'm in the general area. Wow. It's a, it's a wedge band. Yeah. Oh yeah. Holy cow. It's old school, baby. Yeah. <laughs> now are you doing something for hearing protection on the wedge side? Yeah, I've, I've, I've always had, since I was 17 molded, you know, I, I went to miracle ear when I was in high school, but yeah. now I've got the JH audio stuff and you know, like you get so great. Like we'll be on tour and they'll come out and just, there's a molding session, like just backstage, yeah. like everybody's getting their ears filled and yeah. So I, I do have in ears, but not for cheap trick. You know, I, there's, I do stuff with, with the, the PDX or, um, am I saying that right? Roland PDX. Oh, the SPDSX. Yeah. S S yeah. Sorry. I'm thinking about flying to Phoenix or to, uh, Portland PDX. <laughs> 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 you've been to every airport you could tell us where every good eatery and bar is in the in an airport that's kind of what my, my whole my whole thing on the road is, is finding good food and, and just yeah. doing sightseeing because there's so many so many hours of nothing we do you guys sound check during the day or no? no okay so that's beautiful it gives you the whole day see our day is broken up because we are a sound check band we'll go in there and play four songs and it's at like 3 30 or in the afternoon and so like i get up and we'll get to a gym or do a drum clinic and then try to get back to the sound check and then, so it breaks up the day um i'm i'm just so used to that that schedule it must be cool to have the whole day to do whatever you it's, want until it's time to rock it's pretty wonderful you know because yeah. like i said you know got friends all over the place and you know have lunch and then also have four hours to chill before the show and yeah because you know as you know it's like it to switch your brain when it's when it's showtime to to rock mode instead yeah, of man. just hanging mode yeah. so yeah I'm, they've had that's basically the same crew for decades and so they know the sounds they know you know how to set everything up and make it sound the same every single night so yeah man it's been kind of wonderful to play with, with older guys that just have spent so many decades at venues where like i don't want to be there until the show <laughs> until you know? it's time follow the flashlight yeah, black we, limo we, follow the yeah. flashlight we get there about 90 minutes ahead of time so they're you know warm up vocals get dressed and whatnot but 
we're you know as soon as we're done we're probably in the car within 20 minutes that know? is killer backstage you have the uh like a little practice pad or something you just kinda... yeah I've got, I've got a couple of little practice pads but i don't know like i, I i'm very fortunate that i've never had any issues of you know carpal tunnel or anything like that or you know tightness so i just kind of go up and do my thing i don't know i love it well that's because you're, you're you know have, you have the swashbuckling you have the good touch <laughs> I don't know, it's, no. it's kind of it's just great it's kind of punk rock in so many ways just like now who are the drummers that came along in the early days that were like your whole your uh, mount rushmore's is it the typical guy typical guys that we would think of course typical guys but um like my late teens i really got into mad apps yeah yeah you know, from government mule heck I yeah just, great drum really cool kind of ginger baker meets almond brothers meets a rock drummer like hard rock drummer and that band is just for me in my formidable years were just he was just he did all the things i liked i mean i'm not great at double bass but he did some cool triplet stuff and yeah just kind of accents you know things so i'm working on that but uh yeah I, I, you know the mount rushmore is there and we, we don't even need to say those names obviously i'm a ludwig guy so there's two two heads of mount rushmore right there for me yeah. um but then i really got into the, the the session guys i really thought they were the cool one like josh freeze been a fan of his for you know for 25 years now yeah at chamberlain's you know those kind of guys like who can record all the songs that aren't necessarily in a band but they're all songs that you and i have heard a million times and the drumming is always impeccable yep and, you know it's obviously there's a reason those guys are the ones that get called for almost everything because, yeah those guys can do cover a lot of bases yeah. man so i think i think especially like in 2004 when i moved to la it was like to be a hired gun if you will like those are the guys that I, versus you know obviously keith moon is great but he's great in the who and you know john bonham was the perfect drummer for zeppelin but you know not that they couldn't do a bunch of sessions but those, those they weren't doing all you know like the, oh they were perfect for their bands and if you take yeah. them out of their bands it's not that band it's so stylized it's so specific um can you imagine keith moon and all his craziness and elephant tranquilizers and <laughs> booze and all the and then trying to play a three minute three song uh three chord country song think of that i can't it's, it boggles my mind it would be amazing <laughs> oh my god you know every pot has a lid they say so yeah his he was the he was the lid for the who it just it is so interesting to think about these guys that left us at such a young age and left such a body of work when you're looking at like a john bonham i think he was 31 years old and I'm thinking about what I did in my 20s. I mean, I did some stuff or I was preparing to do some stuff, but to have that kind of legacy, woo! It's insane. I mean, and, and yeah, because he he and John Paul Jones and Jimmy Page, they're all like studio guys, you know, that created a band, which is the ideal situation is to have a band, obviously. But yes, you know, but they're also, you know, Jimmy Page was doing guitar sessions, you know, as a profession before he became the Led Zeppelin guy or the Yardbirds guy, you know, yeah. John Paul Jones is, is still like doing a band with, you know, he did about 10 years ago with Dave Grohl. That's and right. Crooked Cultures and yeah. you, know, you don't rest on your laurel, your laurels when you're like a working class guy, like us, like take every gig you can play with as many people as you can, just cause you're in a famous band doesn't mean yeah. that's all you do. You yeah. know, and look at Chad Smith these days. He's everywhere. He's, Hands in the world and he's on every other album you hear You're like jesus yeah it is a great it is a great thing uh man i love to be busy same as you um what um i, I know you're happy for brandy carlisle her yes meteoric success i mean unbelievable i never saw that i knew she was going to be like when i when i played for her 16 17 years ago i knew she was like, she was going to have a career playing 2000 seat theaters forever like she's got that voice songwriting charisma great you know backing vocals and all that and i was like man she's gonna sell out you know the coronado theater in rockford illinois every time she comes around and now she's just massive yeah she's won like 100 grammys and you know three nights at red rocks minimum kind of have thing. you seen her or been able to to uh, i i last time i saw her was probably four years ago three four years ago my wife went and saw her right i got her i got my wife they hooked my wife up with some tickets and passes for red rocks but of course last second cheap trick got a, a corporate gig and i had to fly out and i couldn't make it but uh, yeah they're all we're also friends you know it, it was great and she's got some guy named matt chamberlain played playing drums now yeah he was the drummer on the albums that i 
toured with when I was with her. He was I'm playing his drum parts, and it's just they're they're massive. And I'm so happy for. Her. I mean, <laughs> and she's doing that thing now with like bringing Joni Mitchell back to to everybody's attention. How about and, that performance? It was hair raising, goose bumpy cry time. Totally. I mean, that's how good they are. They really. Are. It's just Brandy and the twins, Tim and Phil, like. They grew up and they created this own little world for themselves in Seattle. Kind of like started up busking basically down at the at the fish market, if you will. And yeah, they brought they just they had they've never veered off their course, and they, they just keep writing great material and sing like birds. And they, uh, it's, but they've I don't mean this in a negative way at all, but I never thought that we'd get to where she is now. It's just it's like wow. Every time yeah. I turn on the TV, it's like and featuring Brandy Carlisle, you know. Yeah, so I'm happy for them. Of course. Now time. I'm now working with the the Dick Dales of the world and the Brandy Carlisles, and I'm sure there was a million other people in there when you're freelance and you're fighting for your supper. You got to play drums to pay the rent. What any interesting stories, takeaways? How did it prepare you for your current situation? I mean, there's a million stories. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been fortunate, to, like you know, like you said on, on my SoundCloud, I've, I've been able to play with. A, a handful pretty much besides dick dale which if anybody doesn't know he was the king of the surf guitar back in the 60s and his most famous song Mizzaloo, we all know from the movie pulp fiction and yes besides him really my entire existence for six years in, in la was female singer songwriters and hotel so cafe was, you're at the hotel cafe so many hotel cafe gigs yeah. and i was in a band called a fine frenzy and we put out a few albums and Oh. did pretty well at that but you know i'm playing a lot of brushes and hot rods and relatively slow tempos and hitting as quietly as i can because a lot of it's acoustic music or piano based you know and then to go from that to you know playing with cheap trick or you know i've done the last three enough is enough albums you know just cl classic rock you know hard hitting you know martial amps hit a little harder if you can kind of situations you know so and then growing up around chicago i mean i kind of the blues was, you know, it's like, it's like the, the shuffle to Nashville is there's a, there's a shuffle style in, in Chicago. So I did a bunch of gigs at BB Kings or not BB Kings. I'm sorry. Uh, House of blues in Chicago. I bet you got that. The, 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 the two hand that, 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 right, on that, that left that, hand helps a lot with that. Yeah. Well, big so time. I just try I've, my entire existence. I've tried to play my favorite bands growing up with Pantera and Metallica. And I always say like, Unfortunately, my feet, I got really fast hands, but really slow feet. Yeah, me too, man. I so mean, my, my feet are and Ringo became my jam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on a, okay. I, I, yeah. Oh. On a great day, I can, I can do, you know, some, some, uh, Carmine Apathy, Bissonetti kind of double bass, like falling rocks, you know, four in the hands, two in the feet, two in the hands, that kind of a thing. That kind of vocabulary is what I, I hang on to for like song endings. And, um, right. Right. That, and that's what I'm going for something smart. Usually I'm just going for kind of like a Sean Pelton at, at the end of Saturday Night Live, you know, yeah. blah, 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 bang. Yeah. When my, when my oldest son was being born, when my wife was in labor, I had to sub out my first gig with Cheap Trick ever. And the, the first person I thought of and called and hired was Sean Pelton to Look fill in that. for me. That guy, I just was, pulled that out of nowhere. Like, boom. Got that swag. I've, I've watched him for so many years. He's got that swagger and that swing. I'm like, that'd be perfect. You know, he, that's what Cheap Trick is all about, is that, that swing kind of thing. So, and this and that, geez. Yeah. How great is he? And what a yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. What about, did you ever get into Carmine and the Vanilla Fudge? Yeah, and yeah the Vanilla Fudge yeah. stuff. And yeah, I mean, obviously that guy's had a 60 year career. I know. And he was yeah. the, the, the timing was perfect because he was the first non -but buttoned up, like academic looking drum teacher that wrote drum beats down on cocktail napkins and put this book out. And that is like, well, I think it's probably one of the only drum books that has sold like a million copies. Really? I, I guess I didn't know he had a book. Yeah, oh, yeah. That it was a uh, the real famous one is called Realistic Rock by Carmine <laughs> Carmine Apathy, and so it's him in like a leopard skin shirt on the cover, and there's a pull out poster, and he starts you on boom, and he builds it from there. You know, the foundation is the most important thing. You know, I've become a golfer in the last few years, and ah, putting is the most important thing. Like you can hit a drive three hundred yards, but then if you three putt, you know, I think yeah. the same goes with drumming. You know. I tell this old story all the time that I was all proud of myself jamming a Metallica and Pantera. And I called my, my father down and said, okay, come listen to this. And I just 
blue chops for like three minutes. He was like laughing. He goes, can you play a straight beat without doing any fills for five minutes? And I tried and I couldn't, you know, I was like, you can't help yourself. You just got to do that. Ba -ba -do. Even he's like, start over five minutes yep. now. Back to yeah. it. Yeah. That's a, you know, that is a great, great, great. Cause I, I tell my students to do the same thing. No, don't open the Hyatt. Don't play a crash. Don't change the bass drum pedal pattern. Don't put any skiggly digglies in there. Don't do any fills. See if you can do it for the length of a pop song, which is three and a half minutes. And yep. your dad was over training you. He's like, let's do five. I was, it's a yeah an extended version, but yeah. it was it was like the best lesson I ever got because very few bands want a drummer that's playing all over the place. They want a drummer that makes it feel good and lets the guitar player and lead singer do their thing. You know, yeah. And with bass players, I mean, I think a good bass player is nearly impossible to find. There's, I'm sorry, a great bass player. But good yeah, bass yeah. players are everywhere, but good drummers are everywhere. But great is hard to find and. It's just four strings, but man, see, I, I always go back to the ACDC thing. Like without Phil Rudd, no offense to anybody else, but all the other drummers they've had, it never sounded like ACDC. Yeah. Or, you know, it's like they've had Cliff on bass forever. He's just playing do, 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 just throughout the whole song. One note through the whole song. It's like, yeah. That's harder to do than people think. You know? Yeah. Now coming into your band with that's essentially family um when you were was it just like a an easy thing like wearing an old pair of shoes when when you first started doing it or was there uh i mean yes and no because i've known those guys they well, i'm sorry they've known me since i was born yeah yeah um and so i've been around a ton and i've filled in and like i said i was 20 years old when i first did that and i was young and i wouldn't say dumb but young and dumb just like not nervous because it's what are you gonna do it's I know these songs and so it, it kind of happened again when i was 29 when i when i started my current tenure you just go do it and you know what, what are you afraid of like if you make a mistake you know the band's pretty loose we'll, we'll do it again tomorrow and that moment's gone move on we'll go yep. you know forget about that you know flop you made we all make flops you know whatever who cares it's not you know we're not trying to be that band that's just like perfect yeah. So that, I mean, I think that just attitude made it so much easier. And just the fact that I really, I had to work on the stuff, but I didn't have to really learn a lot of it because it was already in there versus like, if I got a you know, Pearl Jam call me tomorrow, I, I'd, I'd have to like really sit down and like dissect and learn mm -hmm. and, you know, so I think I got very lucky in the fact of kind of being around that band for so long. So I wouldn't say it was easy, but it was definitely not as nerve wracking as other things I've done. Amazing. Now, speaking of Pearl Jam, didn't you do two nights with Eddie Vedder? Did you back him up? Yeah, yeah. What's that story? Uh, he's a giant Chicago Cubs fan, as ah. well as I am. And um, anybody that knows baseball knows Theo Epstein was the general manager that turned the Boston Red Sox curse around, won them their first World Series. Is World Series last year. <laughs> and so then the Cubs hired Theo. And so and he got the Cubs the World Series for the first time in 106 years. That's a long time. Yeah, I'd say so. Um, but he's got this great foundation. He, um, it's called a foundation to be named later. So I think I think they raise money and then they decide where it's going to go. Versus oh, like, it's yeah. always just for one thing. Um, but every year they do a concert in Boston in the winter and then Chicago in the summer. So anyways. I was lucky enough to be asked to be the house drummer, kind of Eddie Vedder's drummer for two nights for the foundation to be named later. We played uh, the Metro in Chicago, which is a legendary rock club. Nice. And we did another night at, at like a party at a hotel, like kind of, I wouldn't say bar, but yeah, convention center kind of thing. And yeah. Eddie was Ed, he goes by, um, the nicest guy in the world. I mean, I learned it. 15 20 songs and then we played like seven that he just called off the top of his head from stage that oh nice that kind of oh yeah it was like pretty free form he wanted to play rock in the free world which wasn't on the set list or you know, whatever it was and luckily there are songs that i've heard a million times and i think i got through them pretty well yeah when was this uh 2015 the year okay. before they won the world series so oh yeah 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 yeah, once you get like into the sports them. talk, I you know I really wish I was like a Steve Gorman or somebody that that had that background with sports, yeah. man. Because everybody in my band is, it's on every television all yeah. day long. For me, you know, I, my brother, my oldest brother, was a professional golfer. For he went to college on a full ride and then went 
played on a couple different tours. Never made it to the to the PGA, but got pretty close. Wow. Um, but I was just never that kid. I was in the basement playing instruments all day. I, I'm not a big guy, and I can never throw a football. Or, but for me, like touring as much as I always have, baseball became the thing first. It was like they play 162 games a year, and they're, it's like three hour game. So no matter what during the day when you're on tour, like there's going to be baseball on TV. And you, yeah, just one of those things, you know. Then you still have 12 more hours before the game hey, you, man it's <laughs> as american as apple pie man it's Absolutely. like shame on me you know it's uh yeah, and then I moved to phoenix and got a set of golf clubs and now i played as much as possible well that's a it's it, that's you know people fall in love with that it is a money pit uh yeah. you know the clubs the the fees the now my dad get this he actually works he's retired in florida but he actually works at the golf club uh so he can play for free and he'll play three four days a week and this man has two hole in ones Jeez, yeah my brother who was a professional for years has one in his entire life so your dad's twice as good as he is i know they're like where'd the ball go where'd the ball go check the cup let's just check the cup oh my god i don't know if you can read it but third place alice cooper, alice cooper i got third place in alice cooper's golf tournament a couple hey months not ago. bad I get to play with him a lot because he, he plays seven days a week out here. So I've, I've gotten, I've gotten into his rotation. Yeah. You know, they need a player. And I just, so he's always the first one off the tee. So in the summer we started about five forty-five AM. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then the winter, as soon as the sun comes out at seven, seven fifteen, we're cracking. Dude, that is so cool. Now he's got, uh, Alice has got that great, uh, music education, uh, outlet. I, I did a clinic there. Um, yeah, what is it called? Right. Solid uh, Rock. Um, Solid Rock. Alice Cooper Solid Rock. Alice, Alice Cooper Solid Rock. So he's got this great place for, um, I believe, like at risk youth or mm -hmm. you know, sort of like latchkey children, so they can go to a safe place and kind of work yes. on music or learning Pro Tools or songwriting. It's really cool. Yeah, he's got three locations now here. Oh wow, I didn't know that. And it's it, it's exactly that. It's for kids that don't really have anywhere else to go, that don't play basketball or whatever. You know, like yeah. There's instruments everywhere, and, and it's I've got, I've been to a couple of his concert events for that, and it, it's, it's kind of like School of Rock, you know. They'll have like a like I wouldn't say a talent show, but kind of like you know a, a performance of these 15, 16, 17 year what twelve year olds that have been learning through his school, and it's, yeah. they get a band together and go play in front of an audience, and I think that is just so rewarding for the, the instructors as well as the kids. I should, oh like, yeah. So much different, as you know, playing in your room by yourself versus playing in an audience. Yeah, I mean, and as soon as you get with other kids, you know, it teaches them about, you know, teamwork and persistence and being able to take direction and uh, change Going last minute. Yeah, all the stuff. Life yeah. skills. Yeah, or just have, you know, people that care. A lot of, like you said, there's a lot of, you don't have parents, they're foster children or they're yeah. in a group home. And to have an adult that is looking after you and giving you positive, re you know, reinforcement and life lessons you know i don't care if it's sports or playing in a band it's like you're in a group now you have to show up on time you have to show up prepared yes you know and have and have fun doing it hopefully you know every so, teacher every music teacher in the world is like can you say that again you're you're corroborating their story that they tell their kids every day and sometimes they just have to have a third party especially if they're a famous rock and roll drummer say no your teacher is right you need to be on time you need to be prepared yeah well i, I just think you know I've got, like I said, two children and it, I'm trying to teach them things, but they're not going to listen to me the same as they would a teacher. A third party, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? yeah. So I think I could show them drums all day long and be like, whatever, dad. But like, if, if you showed up and we're like, come on, kid, you know, like, holy shit, Rich is here. You know, I think it's just a different <laughs> vibe. You know, it's not dad. Yeah, it's, no, it's, it is a funny, that is a funny cultural phenomenon. Man, I'm just so happy for you. You are a famous rock and roll drummer with a strong job that just keeps coming. The band is famous, infamous. They are have that Midwestern work ethic. I mean, to do no less than 100 shows a year, love it. I mean, we used to do 200 shows a year. Now we do 50. And, um, you know, it's just a weird thing. I have to have food in my refrigerator. Um, you know, it, it's it's crazy. <laughs> It really is. But um, hey, so how do you like to be found? Would you like to answer questions and such online? Is it through your website? Is I believe it's DaxNielsen.com. Yeah, I mean, I'm mostly these days, I, I just focus on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, Those crazy with, kids are on Instagram, man. 
I never did the Twitter X thing, even though my, I love the, the letter X, but I, yeah. Twitter to me, it, just, I, it was too much. And then yeah. I go on Facebook now and again, I'll check, I'll check it, but I'm not really doing much, but you can find me on Instagram, cheap trick Dax. Love uh, it. My website, I, I can get emails through there as well. Dax Nielsen, N-I-E-L-S-E-N. Yep. Dot com. And, Amazing. Uh, or just, I don't know, find me at the, your local taco shop or the golf course. Well, speaking of the tacos, yeah, you're a lover of tacos. I, I mentioned, I think you mentioned in another interview that I saw somewhere that you love the Cactus Taqueria in LA. Which one did, I always went to the one on in Studio City. Okay, no, I went, to, I, I started out at the one on Vine right by uh, Pro Drum. Pro Drum, that's a good one too. It's not even two blocks from Pro Drum, so yeah. I'll go look at some drums and eat some tacos and then go back and, you know, hang out for a And there's another one. I forget what street it's on, but it's as you head um, towards Silver Lake. It's like I'm almost there, pushing there, toward. I think yeah. There's one on Beverly now. There's one on Vine. When I was there, it was just the Beverly and the Vine. But now there's all the Studio City and, um, yeah, there's a couple in the Valley. I, 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 and so that, we always stay in West Hollywood when I'm in L.A. these days. Yeah. So to go all the way anywhere else besides, I mean, Melrose. I'm sorry. Yeah. Vine in Santa Monica is pretty close to where I stay. So, chicken. Yeah, that was like, man, that place is just killer. I always got the same thing a, a whole wheat tortilla with the chicken avocado oh, nice. bur burrito. And just so, it's such great. I don't even know if I can say this, but it's just man food. You gotta hold it. You know, you're like, all right, we're going to go work construction yeah. all day. And I think, I mean, it's all joking aside, I think like a taco or pizza is the ultimate food because you can just. It's, it's the basic thing, but you can put anything you want on it or in it. And it's so satisfying. And yeah. When I was younger, my, you know, my metabolism was much faster. I, I'd eat a burrito and then three extra tacos and just and not gain a pound. Now it's like, oh, you can't have less than three tacos. tacos. Three, three, three tacos. tacos. You got to have three tacos, man. Yeah. That's the way it works. So, hey, in closing, we usually like just to have the, uh, the fave five. I'll ask you what your favorite thing is five times in a row. Your favorite color? Turquoise. Really? Okay, that's great. That's my first. Got a new, my, I got a new drum set coming from Ludwig, and I I asked for turquoise, wow. not complete the turquoise stripe on top of the finish I'm getting. So it's kind of like the Ringo vibe, but with turquoise. I guess, I mean, kind of like that. I guess oh, we'd yeah. say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the remote control, but yeah, kind of like that. And I'm getting a gold kit with a turquoise stripe. So it's going to look something like that. Dude, that's great. Okay, we'll be looking for that. Is that going to be this year on tour or next year yeah. on tour? Yeah, they're okay. making it right now. They're making it right now. I've been to that factory. Is that the factory there in uh, North Monroe? Carolina? Monroe, yeah. Carol yeah, North Carolina. Yeah, I've never yeah. been there yet. I saw, the, oh. I saw the 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 these machines that literally made Bonham's kit and Ringo's kit. I'm like the same. I'm like they're like yes, those are the molds. I'm like wow. Well, and for so long, I mean, the, the early days, Chicago was the home of yeah. Ludwig. And a friend of mine that lived lived there at the time when he was a kid, they said he's got like 15 bass drum pedals because they literally closed the factory and just threw everything in a dumpster. So kids and you know adults, everybody were like dumpster diving and just pulling out hardware and you know bass That's drum. That's nuts. Pedals. Yeah, that is crazy. I think I know the answer to this. Favorite food? <laughs> Mexican. <laughs> now with the taco, I, 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 as much as I talk about tacos, I do think the burrito might be the better option because. It's it's, it's encapsulated, self encapsulated. Oh, man, I am I am craving that cactus. Woo! Um, favorite drink. Ooh. Can I incriminate myself? Or <laughs> I I'm, okay, I'm a water. Baby. I don't drink pop where I'm from or soda, whatever whatever yeah. region you're from. Um, yeah. I quit drinking beer. It finally started getting me so bloated. But these days, I like a good high noon seltzer or a oh. vodka vodka soda. Vodka soda. Hey, yeah. Nice, nice and light. Doesn't fill you up and get you all bloated. Nice skinny drink. Yeah, no, beer uh, Beer can be farty, bloaty, gassy. You know what I mean? You pour a beer too fast, it just floods over. And that's what you're, you're putting that in your body. And you're just, just like, you know, you're just like, Ugh. Yeah, no, it's not, it's not a good thing. But I do like the taste of a nice uh, IPA, like a Lagunitas or something like that. Like one with the tacos or a Pacifico with the tacos. You know. Actually, the only time I ever drink Coca Cola is out of the glass bottle when I'm eating, when I'm eating Mexican food. Like oh, yeah. otherwise, I don't drink that crap. But it's just yeah. so cold and bubbly. Love it. How about this? Is this can be hard uh, for some people? But say you hear this particular song on the radio. Oh my god, you are gonna crank this thing up. What's your favorite song that just keeps rearing its ugly head in your life? Oh, 
New or old? I can give you a, a few. Yeah, um, man. I love Mr. Brightside by the Killers. I just Me think Ronnie, too. Ronnie, Ronnie Venucci is so badass, and that's just, it's just a great song. I, but it is. Uh, I mean, Back in Black. Okay. Or, I mean, uh, I'll give you one more. Uh, Hard Day's Night by the Beatles. Oh, Bam. it's been, a, and then they just, they just start rocking for two and a half minutes, like you said, just cruising through it. Those are all epic pillars of rock and roll popular music yeah that mr brightside really good album i mean i had a lot of fun times to that record yeah i mean try playing along with that whoever's listening to this like he's all over the place doing cool fills and you know 16th on the hi-hat and then just it's just like a really great and he does the the the, the flams going to the second chorus like, blah, 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 blah. it's yeah, just yeah. that but it's like Ain't no perfect, flames blah, 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 blah. yeah it's the perfect fill going in the chorus just and you dive into it so i mean off the top of my head those are three that like never ever get old that was a great great job because a lot of people will be like man i can't really th that's a tough question okay so another tough question you're probably just going to nail it favorite movie it comes on you're going to watch it all the way through doesn't matter makes you feel good scares you i don't know i gotta give you three again sorry okay. look at this friday ice cube and chris tucker nice the funniest movie i've ever seen uh Shawshank Redemption ah um, I mean yes. anytime that's on you're like okay I'm sucked in for the next two and a half hours me too brother that, number one is Big Lebowski for me I love the Big Lebowski look at those are all great. every line is great and the soundtrack's even better you know I get like, I get Big Lebowski a lot I get Shawshank Redemption a lot which is actually my film especially at the end when he, they're in Zawataneo and they're walking on the beach and these right. two friends are coming together and they're like ah. uh, so a lot of Pulp Fiction a lot of Reservoir Dogs uh, yeah they're in there I'm a, man I'm a Caddyshack guy too but I, I could go on and on oh yeah that's a good one da, 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 da. I've got my favorites you know yeah this was so great to spend this time together it was so long overdue and I get to see your drum set up and you know the whole thing man your dog what kind of dog you got there What's <laughs> he's a, a mini golden doodle it's kind of like a half poodle half golden retriever a golden doodle yeah he's 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 a cutie pie but the pool we have a pool in the backyard and the pool guy showed up so he was just barking his head off you, I, be, I you better have a pool in phoenix man I mean, I mean we don't have a heater so i i can't use it it's like we do my wife and i did a, a polar plunge the other day for three minutes and i thought i was gonna die it's like 50 it, degrees at this point you know more and more people are talking about the plunges and they there are it burns fat and it, it recenters all your nerves and all that stuff but i think I, they say that a nice cold shower two minutes a day will do the trick so maybe i'll start trying to do that yeah you're doing all right you look great oh thanks brother your game, buddy. you too yeah, man for me, it's, 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 these are easy when you're talking to a friend versus some you know a person you've never met what? somebody that's got like 15 questions and the sixth question is right. tell me a, more about this yeah so. no boring um so so uh what's the best way to, for folks to find the tour dates and go see you this year is it just uh, uh for the most part this year i mean i'm, I'm super busy with cheap tricks so just go yeah. to cheaptrick.com um i'm doing a handful of other dates with other artists um but i hit like a handful because nice. i mean a lot of times with cheap trick we're booked we're, we're, we're off and then yeah. they get a corporate you know gig that pays good money like hey we need you to fly to memphis tomorrow i'm like I got a gig in so I, I mostly I work out of here because yeah. I can do this when I know I'm home and I you know most people that I do tracks for are really cool about like just get it to me when you can not like we got a deadline I need this by noon tomorrow like oh shit so yeah my my home tracking stuff I not good on the deadlines either usually I my clients are like yeah sometime this week thank god right. you know <laughs> it's, it's different too if anybody that's listening to us talk about this it's so much different when you're by yourself in a room with a track that you're putting because there, there's no feedback immediately about do you like this part or that part you kind of just, in a good way you just do what you want to do but at yeah. the same time you send it over like ooh, you did half time there like i think we want that just to go through and then you got to go back and punch in or just redo it and you're like man yeah if they were in the room with you that we could have done that in two minutes instead of two hours i know it's way more efficient to have the, the client in the room with you but i always bring in uh my friend and drum tech johnny hall and he engineers me and then also he can help me you know get the fifty thousand foot view of the thing and then i at least have another human right. being in the room with me it's definitely like i said it's, it's a bit more difficult when i think this part's going to be perfect or this snare tuning or the you know 
the big fat snare drums on or off. You know, you want a big boomy toms or you want that. You're like, Ugh. yeah, if they were just here to tell you that right at that moment. It sure would yeah. help. But yeah, but it's great to have the, the convenience of my kids are in school. I have three hours to go do this or, you know, they're going to the grocery store. I have 45 minutes. I can go nail a track real quick. <laughs> Don't have to travel anywhere. I love it, man. I love it. Well, man, you're a fine human being, and a fine drummer, and I think everybody should go see you on tour this year. Cheaptrick.com for tour dates. Dax Nielsen, if you got questions for him, really appreciate it, brother. Thank you, Rich. It's been fun. Yeah, man. And I hope to see you this year. And to all the listeners, if you love the show, subscribe, share, rate, and review. It helps people find this show. We need the help. We want people to listen to this, right? Come on. Uh, Dax, thanks again, man. Thanks, Rich. Thanks for having me. All right, we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. This has been The Rich Redman Show. Subscribe, rate, and follow along at richredman.com forward slash podcasts.